Hello, let's talk about forcing a charged particle in a magnetic field. So basically we're taking charged particles and we're hucking them in this magnetic field and seeing what happens. Turns out a force uh, acts on it, but it it's not as straightforward as we're used to. Um, so if you got a charged particle moving in a perpendicular to a magnetic field, it'll be pushed in a direction that's perpendicular to both the velocity and the direction of the magnetic field. So in a third direction. So this is where things are getting a bit different. This is uh, kind of the idea of a cross product, uh, which will come up later. Uh, you've got and end up with some some effect in a third direction perpendicular to the first two. That's that's kind of a cross product idea. All right, uh, so yeah, we got this charged particle. It's moving in a magnetic field that is perpendicular to it, and it um, um, experiences a force in a direction perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. Uh, and a big one, if the velocity of the particle is parallel to the magnetic field, it's not deflected. Uh, so let's talk about our third right hand rule. Uh, we will hold our hand flat with our thumb out at 90 degrees from our fingers. Uh, the thumb points in the direction of positive particle motion. For negatively charged particles, pointed in the opposite direction. So uh, if you've got a positive charge moving to the left, it would be like this, uh, or a negative charge moving to the right. You can have your thumb pointing in the opposite direction. Or, if you have a negative charge, you can also use your left hand. Same idea. Um, so, for negative charges, either have your um, thumb pointing in the opposite direction to which way the, the negative particle is moving, uh, if you're using your right hand, or if you're using your left hand, have your thumb point in the direction of the negative charge. So, careful with that. Right hand, thumb points in opposite direction to negative charge. Uh, left hand, thumb just points in direction of negative, the negative charge is moving. Uh, your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. Lots of field lines, lots of fingers. So that's it. And your palm is the force. So I always think like, ah, palm is strong. Think of it like a punch or whatever. Um, that's where the force is coming from, straight out of your palm. Uh, so fingers, magnetic field, thumb, direction of uh, charge velocity. A little bit funny for a negative uh, charge and force comes straight out of the palm. Uh, and here's our formula. It is your force is equal to your charge times the velocity uh, times B, the, the magnetic field. Um, if your velocity and your magnetic field are not perfectly perpendicular, uh, to figure out the force, you'll also have a sine theta in there. Um, and that, is where theta is the angle between your magnetic field and your velocity. And so that's it. That finds out the kind of like perpendicular component of your velocity in the direction uh, relative to your your magnetic field or the perpendicular component of your magnetic field compared to the velocity, uh, that's what matters. Uh, so here is the formula. It is not terrible in practice. Uh, let's talk about this right hand rule a bit more though. Let's, let's see it in practice. So uh, let's say we're talking this guy. You got a positively charged particle moving through a magnetic field into the page, into the screen. Uh, so I'm gonna take my right hand uh, my thumb will point in the direction of positive charge motion. I'm doing the uh, this guy. Um, my fingers are in the direction of the magnetic field, and my palm is the direction of force. So this guy will be deflected up. Um, by the same logic, I can do it for this guy. I'm going to have my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field into the screen, thumb in the direction of the velocity of the particle, Palm is the direction of the force, so it'll be deflected down. It'll be pushed down initially. Um, by the way, one thing I should mention, uh, since your force is always perpendicular to your velocity, that sounds kind of familiar, right? Um, so if you have a constant magnetic field and a particle moving perpendicular, a charged particle moving perpendicular to that field, it will move in a circle. 
And if you have just a component of your velocity uh, parallel to the magnetic field and the other one perpendicular, the parallel component of the velocity is unaffected. So just keep cruising that direction. The perpendicular component causes a net force towards the center of the circle. So it ends up moving in a spiral because the parallel is unaffected and it just keeps going in, in the direction parallel to the magnetic field. Um, where, where its perpendicular component's velocity is constantly deflected into sort of a circular shape. So it ends up spiraling. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, anyway, let's continue doing more examples. So these guys, uh, if the magnetic field was everywhere, they would actually go into circles. This guy would be doing a circle like this. And, oh, hold on. I got that backwards. It's deflected up. Sorry. This guy would be doing a circle like that. And this guy would be doing a circle like this. Eventually, if you like to keep going. But initially, this guy is just being pushed down, and this guy is being pushed up. Uh, let's do this guy. Uh, we've got a negative charge, which gives us a couple options. Uh, we can use our right hand and point our thumb in the opposite direction it's moving, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. It will be deflected into the screen, into the page. Um, yeah. I'm going to do a little circle there. Uh, the other way we could deal with it is we could take our left hand, thumb in the direction of the negative charge motion, fingers still in direction of the magnetic field, and palm still in direction of force. So again, deflected into the page. Uh, and then we got this guy here. We have no perpendicular component of our velocity. So this guy, uh, this guy would be doing a circle right here. These guys would be doing circles right here. This guy would just be going. Oops, sorry, this guy would just be going straight through, just straight through. Um, so hopefully the right hand rule is making sense. Uh, I want to show you a quick video of this spiraling. Uh, right here. So you got a charged particle in the magnetic field. Notice the, the parallel component. It's got a constant velocity moving up. That parallel component isn't being deflected, whereas the perpendicular component is causing a net force towards the center, and so it ends up spiraling. Uh, this happens actually, the way our magnetic field around our planet is set up, uh, we've got the sun constantly spewing charged particles at us, uh, which is bad if you don't like cancer. Um, but um, our magnetic field, the way it's set up, it constantly deflects them towards the north and south poles. Um, and gives it much more time in our atmosphere to, to lose a lot of its energy. So it, it shields us from this crazy amount of radiation, which would otherwise cause problems. It's also protected our atmosphere. Mars doesn't have an atmosphere because the solar wind was able to blow it away over billions of years uh, just by smashing into it. But because of our magnetic field, um, it shields us from, from cancer, from solar wind, charged particles being fired from the sun, uh, turns them into beautiful northern lights uh, and also protects our atmosphere. So, pretty cool. Uh, and that is charged particles and magnetic field. Please like and subscribe.